Hi. Oh, did you guys did you guys catch all that madness backstage? Uh, no. No. Uh, no. Uh, we I wanted to, but then I noticed that the door open brought in a shaft of light, and I feel like it would have ruined the effect if if it wasn't pure dark. Well, first of all, thank you for being so courteous. And second of all, welcome to Australia, you guys. Thank you. Are you guys happy they're here? Yeah. Oh, there's so many balloons. Oh, we missed the balloons. Actually, I wanted to see the balloons. You know what? Afterwards, we're going to give you some balloons to take with you, okay? Uh, we, we made a wager in the back of how many balloons would well, pop over. Well, now we're going to bet on it. Well, don't no, because they don't know what, how many we, we chose. Fair, but you're not, I feel like you're encouraging it now. No? Oh, okay. Well, okay. okay. He's enabling right. the poppers. Yeah, definitely. To pop. I shouldn't. It yeah. goes against my... Okay, anyways. All right. Well, it, it is almost unbelievable, but Supernatural is coming to an end. And I was wondering, did you guys know when the boys made the announcement did you guys know that was happening or how much in advance were you aware that this would be the final season tough question to start the panel um, yeah they're like so everything's ending um, no no but uh, yeah I really basically they talked to me and they just kind of let me know a little bit in advance that uh, that it was coming to an end and uh, for me I was glad just to get the heads up mostly for the crew's sake and everybody that works on yeah. the show, um, just so they have time to kind of, um, you know, deal with it professionally. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's always been a story about the Winchesters. So if that's when their time is ending, then, you know, that's the right thing to do. Right, absolutely, and and uh, no one's ever really dead on Supernatural. It's it's no. you know we can, we can't say. So is there any chance that you may make a little uh, return in but the Audrey, final season? How many times have you died on Supernatural? I think just out of curiosity. Technically three times. Yeah. Define technically for me. Uh, uh, I mean, because there's this one scene where Crowley kills me for like a split second, and the next scene I'm alive again. So he just brings you back, like, right away? Yeah, well, yeah, like, Metatron saves me at the point of death. Oh. So, yeah, I don't know if that counts. He was like, just it, kidding. There, like, two and a half. <laughs> yeah, like, two and a half. I'll, I'll say two and a half. Okay, okay. But technically, yeah. there's also two different Kevins, and they both died separately, so it, it depends on how... It's very confusing. Yeah, you've yeah. died twice. I've well. only died twice, so only it's like... Twice. It's like rookie numbers, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know? I mean, you know. But you, you bring up a good point, being confusing. The story... Oftentimes, the storylines are convoluted, and the mythology is very intertwined has there ever been a scene uh for either of you or or a part of an arc where you were like wait a minute how how am i gonna how am i gonna do that or can someone explain this to me uh now i feel like for kevin it was it was really easy when i i i don't know if i should pride myself on this go for it but kevin doesn't know anything about the supernatural world and every time i jump back into the show kevin doesn't know anything that's going on anyway so i really don't have to do any homework <laughs> um so pretty much most of what kevin says is him trying to figure out what's going on anyways um so i feel like now i've 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 been able to figure out what's going on by not knowing what's going on so. Which is a blessing, yeah, it I guess, out. a little bit. It works and, out, because I'm lazy. And Alex, how do you approach a role, I mean, a, a man body of a two-year-old, possibly the second most powerful being, what, how, how do you go into this? Well, I mean, that's a lot of pressure right off the bat with the two-year-old man body. Uh, <laughs> it uh, is, and not thing. something you see every day. <laughs> no, and listen, it's a lot of new feelings for me, too. Um, in terms of prep, I, I think you actually like took my answer, because... Because there is so many years of, of supernatural history, uh, I was a brand new character who was just born. So people were like, did you have to watch all of the all of the seasons before? I was like, well, I knew nothing. So I did the Kevin Tran method. Uh, right. The it's, Kevin Tran method where I just go like, yeah, yeah, I got the script. I'm good. I'm good to go. <laughs> it's an effective method, it seems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that actually is another good point. The show, many seasons, it's been on the air. When each of you initially auditioned, um, did you know much about the show other than it's in the sci-fi genre? I didn't even know it was in the sci-fi genre. <laughs> You're like, supernatural. You're like, this has got to be some sort of true crime thriller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Special cops and, you know. It could have been. Uh, I, I thought, uh, I mean, I knew of the show because it shoots in Vancouver, and that's the only reason why I've ever heard of it. Um, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't on my radar. I looked to the character, and actually, I, I originally turned it down um, because cause I got a better offer on this other show. Long story short, it worked out. Um, <laughs> and, 
And the funny thing at the time was, once I started working on the show and the episodes started coming out, I started like noticing all these posters on the wall in the house that I was living in, and it turns out my roommates were all hardcore Supernatural fans. Oh my god! <laughs> and I had no, I'm like, is that, is that Jared? Like, yes. We, we didn't know how to tell you this, but we're like huge fans. And we had like, there was this weird like couple week period where they didn't know how to deal with me and I didn't, I mean, I didn't really understand it, um, but you know, it worked out. It would have been way funnier if you were like, came into one of their rooms and you were like, is that me on your wall? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, man, like we're a fan of the show. We didn't want to tell you though. Um, yeah, that would have been really weird. Yeah, it didn't get that. Right above their bed, too, you know? And Alex, did you know much about the show going in? I mean, unfortunately, we're having the same answers. Uh, so we're both from Vancouver, yeah. so the show we already knew was around. And uh -huh. uh, for me, I'd, I'd read for the show, auditioned for the show, probably like over 10 years, like over and over and over again, to the point where I was like, these people are never going to hire me. <laughs> uh, so that was a nice uh, twist. But we knew the show kind of, you know, through reputation and you know, crew where you have friends that work on it. So, you know, it was in our vicinity. Right, right. And you're a huge gamer. You love gaming, yeah. right? So tell us what, first of all, how did you get, how did you find that passion? More than just a passion, because, you know, it's a uh, dedication. I don't know. Uh, I guess it would be. Is there a lot of training involved too? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there is. But what, I think Duck Hunt was the first game that like really did it for me. I'm like, there's a gun. It was, it's such a simple thing. And I loved Duck Hunt. Um, and I don't know. I've, I've just kind of been obsessed with games. It was something that me and my brothers used to fight over. We used to have one computer or one place. To, like, my parents should have gotten multiplayer things, but they didn't understand how that worked. So we would always fight for game time. And so Final Fantasy was something we fought over. Neopets was something we fought over. Uh, just had the one Neopet, huh? Well, no, but there's, like, the one computer, and, you know, you're fighting for, like, refresh time, I guess. But, um... And it just became like an obsession, and for me, it's like that. You know, you get these achievements, you get these little markers or trophies, and it, it just makes you feel good for. I mean, really accomplishing nothing, uh, but I got really good at it. And do you play you <laughs> tabletop games too, right? Yes. Uh, so tabletop games. Have you ever done like uh, Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that? No, no, uh, my imagination is not good enough uh, in order to be able to play these kind of games, unfortunately. Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, tabletop. Because you create a lot of the story yourself, right? You, you do. Uh, but par, par, some tabletop uh, Have you ever not done all. improv? Yes, and. <laughs> exactly. Right? Sorry, so, that was really specific. That, uh, that's an improv joke. Well done. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's essentially you're improving in a character, and the fun of it is, like, if you decide your character is going to be like an asshole and you're going to go this way and make all these weird decisions for the sake of it, like yeah. they will shape the story around it. So if there's a dragon out there, you don't have to fight the dragon. In fact, I've had a friend, he's like, well, I don't want to fight the dragon. I just want to like hole up in this bar and hit on that, that orc chick. This is a game? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Like, so you can do any. This but, sounds but like a Comic Con in, style it's situation. Improv too. <laughs> yeah, it's improv, and like a lot of it really comes down to the game master, the dungeon master, because they can curate the experience. So right. Yeah, it's great. It is. So great. you're our dungeon master today. So I'm yes. the dungeon master. She is the dungeon master. Understood. Today. I'm learning so much. Yeah. It, 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 at the dungeon master, there's a meme right now that the dungeon master deserves to have fun too. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we'll be we'll be doing that. Um, we're gonna open it up to questions. If you guys have a question, raise your hand. We can bring the house lights up a little bit, and someone will come around and find you. And while they're sort of getting themselves organized, obviously we know you geek out. You love gaming, tabletop gaming. How about you, Alex? What are you like passionate about? What are you watching? What are you listening to? L.A. <laughs> I'm a fraud. This is just a hat. Um, I have a PS4, so mm -hmm. the Uncharted game was oh, really yeah. so incredible, and it was just so well done. Mm -hmm. um, but I also play, also play like FIFA. Um, but the question that I've had the most fun with that I've enjoyed just kind of riffing off of, the real problem for me is why isn't there a Supernatural game? Because I feel like... It would be so cool. Uh, there is. It's called Clue. <laughs> <laughs> With the candlestick and... Good. I was actually like, oh my god, I haven't heard of the game. But no. He had you for a minute. 
Just a minute. No, but you're right. A supernatural game would be great. I, I feel mean, like it has a lot of potential. You're like you're yeah. driving to different locations. It could be like Grand Theft Auto or like Red Dead Redemption. Well, they literally just launched like the new Game of Thrones game, like coinciding with the last episode. So maybe there's something you know to work towards. Well, I'm surprised, uh, like s someone hasn't used like RPG Maker and just made their own like fan version of the supernatural game. I, I thought it would have happened by now. I had tinkered with the idea of making a supernatural game, but I had too many other things I wanted to do. So. Well, maybe you should tinker again. Someone <laughs> smart enough here should develop this. Someone game. smart enough. Here. Someone is smart enough here. But yes. Well, but they're probably too smart to do. But it's not us. Uh, <laughs> It's All right, we'll it's clearly start, not us. We'll start over here. Hi. 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 Green Beret. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I was just wondering, uh, there were a lot of pranks at behind the scenes of Supernatural. Um, was there any pranks that you pulled on the, some of the cast or crew? Pranks? Have you pulled a prank on anyone? I haven't. My prank every day is just continuing to show up to work. <laughs> uh, that's how I delude myself into keep going. Uh, every day is a joke to me. They're like, this guy keeps showing up? What? That's really funny. That's Thank great. you. Thank yeah. you. I'm you, too nice. Did you know? No, I'm too nice, and... Yeah, I'm too nice. I'm too nice. All right, next question. And I don't like showing up. Hi. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm here with my sister. She's really embarrassed. It's hilarious. What other f show film would you do a crossover with? Ah, if there uh, were a supernatural one? crossover... That's not Scooby Doo. <laughs> hmm. Do you, have, do you have any ideas? Uh, I, I love comedies. I would do like a Parks and Rec crossover. <laughs> like make Supernatural like a workplace comedy? Yeah. That would be really funny. That would be funny. Yeah, that would be good. Who would be like our. Jerry? Misha would be Jerry. <laughs> Misha would be... That's actually great, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would be really funny. I'd love like the, I love the meta episode where they kind of break character. And yeah, the, yeah. That's so the that would be super fun for like the Parks and Rec thing. Uh, what I kind of liked for for the end of the season for the finale, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, apologies. Um, but there was you know like forty or fifty zombie people on set. So I always thought that like a, like a Walking Dead uh, supernatural crossover just seems. Inevitable in some capacity. Have they not done zombies ever? But I mean, like the the full show, like we get Negan, and that could like uh, kind of, you know, I mean, fulfill both roles, you know. <laughs> John, went, he ran away to be Negan. Yeah. Yeah, he left yeah. to be Negan. Yeah. Dad, you turned into a real asshole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, sorry, kid. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, great question. Thank you so much. Hi. Um, if you had to choose one Disney princess, what one would you be? Hmm. I think I've already been th like three of them. <laughs> Please share. Uh, ooh, Dis Disney princess. Uh, I mean, I, I had two favorites growing up. That was Belle and, and uh, Ariel. Um, Both uh, collectors, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. She collects yeah. books. The other one collects shells. You got some secrets for us, I'm guessing. I'm a hoarder. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad this could be revealed. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, Jasmine had, I mean, she was friends with the tiger. That seems pretty cool. Oh, uh, yeah. She also had access to a magic carpet ride. I mean, that, uh, genies, a lot of <laughs> magical stuff going on there. So I would, I, you know, I'd be Princess Jasmine, I guess. Maybe for a day. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a major ballad that went along with it. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm curious, Alex, when you're, when you're, going in actually let's go back to the audition process when you were auditioning for supernatural what how did you first like present the character or what were what did the sides say about the character that you sort of had to craft um well basically it was the uh, two-year-old man child uh which was a great <laughs> starting point uh no basically the kind of the two aspects of the character were the the plain innocence and uh you know, being brand new to the world and have everything be kind of new for the first time. But it was also mixing that with, I had a, I had a scene with, with Mark Pellegrino's Lucifer, so where he was kind of very angry at, uh, at his dad. So I kind of had both those scenes to kind of do the, the wild contrast between naive Jack and, you know, potentially homicidal Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, and two seems such like an arbitrary age. You know, why not four? Why not three? Too expensive, you know? It's, we yeah. really got to save on the years. And Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. Hi. Hi. Um, just a question. You hear about all the fun and shenanigans that happen offset. What would your favorite offset moment be? Behind the scenes moment. Are you asking about a prank and hiding it behind a different wordage? <laughs> well, I mean, I think the beautiful thing about Supernatural is the offset stuff. I mean, like, a lot of us are really close friends because of, like, all the conventions and all the events that happen around the Supernatural fandom and the community. And, uh, and we've never worked together. You know, and I think that's such a, a lovely and rare thing that, I mean, first time I've ever encountered that. And I, and I just love, um, like, I mean, the Kings of Cons happened. Yeah. Were you uh, on that, by the way? Uh, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. how you had to think about it. I, like, I did. I, I was on that. It was, <laughs> it was real, I, I forget. I'm forgetful these days. Uh, my favorite thing uh, was at the San Diego uh, convention. I think it was 2014. Uh, but I had dressed up as a, a game character from this game, Journey, and I had kind of like went around all Comic Con in costume. And then Hall H happened, Supernatural did their panel, and I like basically finagled my way into line and I asked a question and then I, I pulled it off. And my favorite thing of, of that con was um, at the beginning of the, the morning, like Misha and a, and a bunch of people from uh, Gishwiz and Random Axe, we're, we always do something nice with uh, the Hall H line because they sleep there overnight. And so we were handing out coffees in the morning and donuts, and I was in this creepy costume trying to give people coffees. <laughs> um, but everyone was like either holding out for Misha or they just didn't want coffee from a creepy, you know, costume dude. Hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say. Probably one of the two or both. Uh, but as soon as, like, pulled the mask off, everyone went crazy. But the only thing I heard was this girl behind me screaming, I should have taken the coffee! <laughs> and, like, <laughs> that was a moment for me. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. That, that's really interesting to dress up. You know, San Diego Comic-Con is obviously huge, but to be anonymous like that and be able to, you know, walk around and experience the convention from sort of a fan perspective. Well, I, I used to, I mean, I still do. I still attend conventions as an attendee, you know, so I kind of mix it. Um, but I used to cosplay all the time, which is why I started cosplaying uh, as a guest through accident, so. Well, now you can just cosplay as Kevin. People will be like, you're the perfect Kevin. Yeah. That's an amazing Kevin right yeah, there. Yeah, he's so good. So Has anyone ever told to you that yeah. you're doing great, man? I'm, you're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next question. Hi. Hi. Um, so obviously we all know about the awesomeness that is Supernatural. Um, I just introduced my partner and he didn't realize how big it was. So did you guys, when you first signed up for the show, quite realize how big your fandom was and how big the show was going to be? I, I really had no clue whatsoever. And I'm, I'm constantly astounded uh, by, by the whole thing. Uh, Whenever people like ask me that kind of question, it was almost seems like for people that uh, the the fandom attached would be obvious, but for me, I I really had no idea. And the fact that like I can come here or we can go to Europe and like have these kind of experiences just does not cease to get new or, or amaze me every single time. Did uh did you have a moment with? For me, it was Jared, where he's like, just like. So you know, like at some point they're gonna start calling you and asking you, just just be ready for it. You'll they'll be all right. Did he And you're like, who's gonna call me? Like, what are you talking wow. about? What are you <laughs> so, Yeah, no, I had a I had a buddy whose wife was on Stargate and he kinda described like what that was to me previously and I was like, That's not real. Like that doesn't sound real. Uh so I really had no idea. Do either of you have a most memorable sort of fan experience or like a profound moment where someone's like this has really impacted me i i think a lot which is why i mean that's been my my favorite thing about the conventions is you know as an actor you know for especially for film and tv we rarely get that feedback we really understand or ever think about how our work has impacted anyone else's life but our own you know, and this is the first time in my experience that I've really been able to, like, see it firsthand. And it's, it's incredible. I mean, it's really given my, my career a meaning, 
you know, because before mm. I used to think like, you know, acting like I'm, I'm such an asshole. I just want to be an actor. That's the most selfish thing I could do. And, you know, you just then, want the fame. You just want the. Yeah. You know, fame and money and all that. That really. The cars, the fast cars. Yeah, the, the, those fast cars that yeah. are fully insuranced. That's the word. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a car person. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but it, it really was like coming into this fandom, going to these conventions, meeting people, to, and to see how many people, and having multiple of these profound moments that it's like, oh my goodness. Like, well, one, thank you for like giving my life some meaning, because before I didn't think it had any. Oh, right? yeah. that's so sweet. Yeah, right, so I, guys? Yeah, I think, so I think it was profound on both sides because I think for a lot, like, the fandom, like, yeah, they, they idolize a lot of us, but at the same time, like, they've changed our lives to, you know, places we've never even dreamt about. Um, so it goes both ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Over here. Hi. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hi. Um, I was just wondering that after 15 years, what you think the perfect ending to Supernatural would be? Because I was thinking about it on the way here and Sam and Dean just dying just doesn't seem like enough because they've died like 500 times. <laughs> so like, what do so you So wait, think? what do you need? <laughs> you need them to like go out in flames? Or yeah, how like... do you want it to end? How do you well, want them to saying. die? You're, you, have, you know. No, Tell but us. I don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Tell us how you want it to end and we'll make no, it happen. I, I, I honestly don't know. Okay, how do you, wanna, how do, how do you want it to end though? But I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what the perfect. I mean, you don't would know. Be. But how do you want it to end? I, how do you feel in your heart? Yeah. You're, not, you're not getting out of this question. You really so you think about it. How do you want just it to end? Just throw out an idea. I actually, I have no idea. I think that there's so much pressure for the writers to make it like a perfect ending. No, 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 no. Pressure's on you now. Yeah, how yeah. do you want it to end? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they end up in the empty, which I think that's where Jack is at the moment, anyway. And I think he's going to get out, but. That's my prediction. Um, but I'm, I really, I don't know. But like how? Dying but how? Is boring. <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I think we all just learned something important. I think Osric wanted to eat his orange. He's just like, we're going to drill this until yeah. I can finish this orange. Please. Uh, yeah, surely how? How? I, I, <laughs> no, no, don't rush. Don't rush. We don't want to rush you here. But if any of you do have ending ideas, feel free to throw them out throughout the panel. And we'll take our next question uh, right there. Hi. Hi. I'm just wondering, uh, what villains would you like to see return for the final season? Best mm. villains of the show, maybe. Who would you like to see back? I mean, I don't think he will, but I, I, am, I am partial to Crowley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. This was before my time, so I really can't, uh, I can't wage in on it. Name one villain from the past. Osric Chow. <laughs> Bring him back, baby. <laughs> Bring him back. He can have a fetish for oranges and just... They're called cuties. Dismantling people. It'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, it's a Mandarin. But they're also <laughs> called cuties, aren't they? Okay. Yeah, cuties in, in the States. Oh, Mandarin. Sorry. All right. Who has a question and who has a mic? There we go. Up there. Hi. Hi. Hey. Yes, Osric. Yep. Um, so in your D&D games, have you ever critically failed a role? And what were you trying to do? Uh, no, I've been fortunate enough never to have critically failed. Uh, Explain. Said something your dungeon master eventually that like you now, suck so badly that you critically fail. So if you try something, yeah, um, you'll have the dungeon master will be like, okay, like if let's say like you're let's say we're role playing in real life and you're like, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run off stage, I'm gonna I'm gonna crowd surf on the audience all the way up to the top. I don't know why you you'd want to do that, and the dungeon master will be like, okay, that's implausible, uh, but I'll give you. I think it's plausible, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it, okay, but we like, okay, so you have to roll a d20 dice, which is a, tw a 20 sided dice. And I'm like, okay, you gotta hit like 18 for that to happen. So if you hit a 20, which is a natural 20, like the best possible scenario, like magic happens, just you have all of the luck in the world to make that happen, and it happens in a spectacular way. But if you hit a 1, mm. which is the opposite, then uh, I mean, you might just not survive even taking off like who knows <laughs> and it's up to the the dungeon master's imagination to how spectacular you fail wow. uh, but no i have actually been fortunate enough that i've never 
well, actually, it would probably be really fun to fail spectacularly. Well, actually, no, it's, it's funny when someone else does it and, you're, and you get a watch. <laughs> you've, you've done a lot of podcasts, but you haven't done Critical Role yet, right? No, I have not done Critical Role. Okay, That'd so let's great. put it out there. You'd be great. I think I would like to see you on that show. <laughs> Critical Role, which is a tabletop gaming. <laughs> I'm learning so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. We're happy to teach you. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Dungeon Master. <laughs> all right, next question. Hi. Hi. So, first of all, I do have an idea for how the show should end. We're listening. Yeah. I know Jensen had talked about um, Dean getting rid of Baby, but I would love to see him give Baby to Jack as, like, passing oh. it on, sort of that father figure passing oh. the car down again. Mm -hmm. So that's my idea. Would you like that, Alex? I would love that. Uh, I got to drive the car this year, and uh, it was so, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was also terrifying. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, that would be definitely a cool uh, send-off for sure. Uh, yeah, I would like to see him, like, kind of, like, drive off in the distance, yeah. maybe to some peaceful land where they're not, you know, being terrorized constantly. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. But my question is... Oh, God. <laughs> You said to throw it out there. Um, Osric, I wanted to ask you about Dirk Gently. Obviously, we've yeah. lost that gem. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Vancouver show. But Zach Santiago. What Zach up? Santiago. Yeah, that's right. It, Vogel was just so wild. What was it like to be able to just let loose and play a character like that? I, I love Kevin, but I mean, you can, my, <laughs> Dirk Gently was my favorite show ever. So my character literally just... I don't have any, I have like one line every day. And so like I memorize my one line so I don't have to do anything. I show up, it's like, okay, what are we breaking today? And what am I yelling? And that's it. Like I show up and I break shit and I yell at people. It sounds like, like what you were doing backstage too. It's kind of, <laughs> it's crazy yeah, you weird. brought that character to our real I life. Uh, it, I mean, it was the most fun show. So the first day of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, they're like, okay, this is your van. Um, here are your weapons. You can pick whatever you want. Uh, you guys are going to run into that car, and we own everything on that side of the street. So just, you know, like, break stuff and make your way to the apartment. Wow. Now, that was day one. <laughs> and then day two, it's like, okay, we're in the apartment. So, uh, like, okay, who wants to smash the kitchen stuff? Who wants to smash living room stuff? It's like, you got the sledgehammer. You should probably do the TV. And we're just, we were breaking this apartment over and over again. And we did it four times, and it would take 20 people an hour to reset it. Which I, I thought we were only going to do it once. And the fourth time, it was just like, okay, we're just going to get really close shots because nothing is salvageable. Yeah. It was fun. Well, by the way, that type of freedom is really unusual. That's, you know, maybe the point here. In Japan, they have rakioki. Well, no, it's, it's like a karaoke for anger management, and you go in a room and you pay for things to break. And so you get a baseball bat, and you can, like, smash lamps and whatever, and, and wow. you pay for that. I, I got paid to do that. It's great. So people normally pay to do this, but you got paid to do it. Yes, Alex, okay. yes. I, I, I just want to understand. Uh. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. All right, next question. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, how is it working with the Hollywood show on the Supernatural parodies? Oh, Alex, you did one. I did one, but I was not as involved as you were, for sure. Thank you for, for agreeing to it. I, I, I told Alex about it. It's hard. I don't know how to describe it properly, but thank you for taking the chance on it. I took the risk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. They were like, do you want to come to Vegas for an hour? And uh, I was like, yeah. okay, yeah. Why, why not? Uh, I was just so impressed that they were, I mean, you could say more than me, but they the attention to detail that they went through to to get everything that's so similar to the show or just so, uh, I mean, even for Ghostbusters, how they do things were shot by shot was just, to me, the level of, you know, just professionalism that was very impressive. Um, so I just thought, based off that, I would do it. And the fans love it, so I was like, I was like well, <laughs> if they would get a kick out of this, if someone on the Internet will laugh at me, I'll probably do it. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, thank oh, you for that. Actually, okay, I do have a thing. Okay, I, I was telling Alex this back uh, like earlier, and I, I got to pitch this to you. So I did this short film uh, earlier this month where it was a script written by a robot, so basic or an AI algorithm. So this program uh, read 400 action movie scripts, and then it wrote its own action movie, which is super misogynistic, sexist, and all these things. 
Um, and that was like, this is what this computer thinks is an action movie based off of all these scripts it read. So I was talking to this director about Supernatural, and he's like, there's actually enough episodes where we could program it into Benjamin, and Benjamin could write what he thinks is a Supernatural episode. That is unbelievable. I, It'd be so I, great if that was like... I'm just you know, curious to see what happens. And that can be the final episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that, great choice for the finale. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to go non-human. Benjamin really threw us for a loop. Uh, <laughs> that well, would be funny if it was like, you know, there's kind of the one-off episodes each year where there's like the Scooby Natural or this year when they went to, uh, to kind of the diner place where everything was kind of utopian-esque. That would be cool if it was like the one-off episode where it just... Doesn't really make sense, but it does. But it doesn't have to. But Everyone's in character, but the story just kind of... You know. It's like a standalone episode. Yeah, like exactly. Like Lucifer did, the four standalones. So it's, it's yeah, a standalone. Yeah, just by itself. Yeah, boom. Love it. Great. Great ideas here, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Um, this is for Oscar. Uh, That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I was a gamer, like, for about um, 15 years now. And I was wondering, like, what is your favorite video game of all time? Uh, oh, I, mm. oh, do you have one? <sighs> I really liked... Ooh, actually, I forgot about this one. There was a game called Harvest Moon. I was going to say Harvest Moon! Really? <laughs> yes! Harvest Moon on Are N64. Are you kidding? Yeah! Yeah, that game was cool. Wow! I was actually going to say... Because last year, Stardew Valley, like... Which is basically hard. No, it's like a complete. It's a ripoff. But it it took a lot of my time last year. But Harvest Moon is an incredible game. Yeah, I just. Who'd you marry? I I don't remember anymore. I remember Come on, the game. who'd you marry? What color hair did she have? <laughs> the sad part I remember was uh, I borrowed a friend's N64, but I couldn't turn the power off. Oh. Uh, so it couldn't save. So uh, sorry, Dad. Uh, I kept the power on in the upstairs room and just would turn the TV off, but I kept the N64 on so I'd keep my progress going. I forgot about this. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Harvest Moon, and I, the other one I would pick is Final Fantasy Tactics. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next question. Hi. Hi there. My question's for uh, Osric. Uh, being a D&D &D player, I've always had an interest in what kind of player races match with certain character types. If you had to attribute a D and D player race to each of the main cast um, or characters in the show, Man. what would it be and why? Oh, that's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> so, do you know? It's zero pressure for me. The, the race, like... the races are like, let's say, Lord of the Rings are, are pretty close. So, you know, they have like the orcs and the trolls and the dwarves and whatever. Uh, Crowley would be a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, cast. Uh, who would Castiel or Jack be? I, I don't know. Like, uh, it, like in Lord of, Lord of the Rings. In Lord terms. of the Rings? Yeah, in like mean, that fantasy realm. Maybe the like Elvish? Elf, elf? Probably Elvish? Probably the Elvish, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, uh, Sam and Dean are probably just boring humans. Yeah. Right? Super well, boring. no, well, uh, Sam might be like a, an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with like, uh, I'm going to go with Dean being like an ogre. He's always like, he's like, oh, I need the pie. You know? <laughs> Okay. Oh, he's yeah, like, actually. I gotta smash this. Like, so Dean's got the mind of an ogre, but yes, yes. But Sam's got the body of an ogre. <laughs> <laughs> so there, are, there are half siblings. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great question. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, I've got a. Oh, how do I wear this? Um. So uh -oh. on the show, there's clearly many monsters and things that people are th fearful of. So my first question is, what are your greatest fears? Ooh, what are your greatest fears? What do I want to reveal about myself? <laughs> <laughs> my greatest fear is complacency or the lost potential, honestly. It's, it's like a, a fear of inefficiency. I, I'm, it's, it's a weird thing, but I've, I've kind of like realized this in my mind. That's the thing that gives me the most anxiety is when I see something is been done this way when it could be done way better this way and you'd save time and money and, and all that like that that drives me crazy no yeah mm -hmm. listen that's a great real answer uh <laughs> being in australia uh blue ring octopus uh those are terrifying and uh great white sharks easy 
Great white shark. Oh, oh, actually, to that end, the ocean, like being in the ocean. Being is actually, near the ocean. Well, I, I went scuba diving for the first time uh, last year, and I loved it. And then I got to this place where there was a drop-off, and then it was just like darkness. Just nightmare fuel. Right. And then all I could think of was that there was going to be like a giant squid or something coming up. And it was just like, I was just staring at him like, oh my God, when's it going to come? And it was like really scary. Um, also, I could have just fallen off, I guess, which would have been really scary. Well, it would be really funny if you saw the squid and you're like, ah. Oh. The squid's very complacent. Yeah. <laughs> he like, could have oh, been man. more efficient with man. killing me. He, he wasted a lot of time, too. Wow. Think of the things he could have done with yeah. those long arms. He could have moved if he squid really family. applied himself. Yeah. <laughs> he could be so productive. He could have made a short film by now. Could have done, he could have made eight short films. Yeah. With his murder spree. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, if you could be a different character in Supernatural, who would you be? Mm. Jack seems pretty cool. I'd be Jack. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> who would you be if you had a choice, Doctor Strange? Yeah, Doctor Strange. If you could go back in time. Would you be Doctor Strange or would you be Iron Man? Or would you be Scarlet Witch? <laughs> hmm. You gotta give us an answer, buddy. Yeah. I mean, mate, sorry. Wait, are you talking about supernatural characters or Avengers? Well, well you, you were Doctor Strange, so okay, I figured, fine. you know. I would be the Hulk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank um, you. Do you know? Do you have an idea? If I would be someone else from Avengers, I would be um, Hulk. <laughs> Popular there you guy go. Hulk you guy. should have cosplayed as the Hulk. Why didn't you do that? There's tomorrow. There is yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. All right, you have tomorrow, but you do look great as Mom's going to have to do a bunch of work tonight. She's going to have to find a <laughs> blow-up costume. She's going to need a pump, spray paint. What are you talking about? Just do 10 push-ups. You're good. Yeah, exactly. All right, Ty. What was the coolest moment for you on the show? Did you have a standout moment, either of you guys filming or, or specific scene that stands out in your mind? Uh, this past year, I got, to, I got to die several times, which is great. <laughs> But, yeah, going back, I got to drive the car, so that, for me, was, like, a lot of prep. Jensen, like, pulled me aside. He's like, hey, kid. <laughs> He's like, you ready? I'm like, I'm like no, no, I'm not ready. Um, but what was cool about how they shot it was they had uh, this, this technical arm that was out of this SUV that was, like, following you. So as you were driving, there was a camera, like, right in front of your face that was moving, and they can go to the side. So just... Um, Shooting that from like a combination of like the, the technical aspect and the cool equipment and getting to drive the super cool car was a kind of all combined in that moment for me was was awesome. That's cool. For me, it's always going to be that first day on set. So I came in. Uh, ben Edlin was directing, and Jared was just about to be a father. So this was his first son, and we shot the the scene where. Um, Sam's chasing Kevin as he's running away with the tablet. And as soon as we finished that scene, uh, he got a call from Jen, and he's like, oh, my God, she's in labor. And Jared asked, like, he's like, hey, are you, are you okay to, like, finish the scene by yourself? I'm like, I'm like yeah, go, go be a dad. And, like, yeah. he, he just ran off, and then he was, he was never as polite as that ever again. Yeah, never again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have really should have flipped it on him. Be like, ah, buddy, I need the emotional connection yeah, here. Yeah. Can you tell your wife to wait a little bit? Uh, thanks, buddy. Really appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We have time for two more questions, so we're going to go over here. Hi. 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 Hello. Um, I just wanted to remind Osric, you said you're such a nice guy on the set, but you were the only person who managed to dislocate Jared's arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. What did you do? Wait, did he not? You haven't heard that one? What'd you do? Uh, okay. Well, this feels like a shameful moment for you. Though. I mean, it was at the time. Now it's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so we were at this convention in Italy, and a couple of—I mean, we're we're hanging out in the green room. I was reading a book. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I've heard about this one. <laughs> well, so, because you trained extensively in what? I, I mean, I train. I'm I'm a big martial arts fan, so I tra oh, I trained in a, like a dance martial art. It's not even a. I think a you did like jujitsu. I mean, I, a little bit, but like I'm not like super well trained. It's just that Jared is not trained. 
Um, he does love UFC, though. He yeah. does, but yeah, and he's super strong. Um, and if he did apply himself, I mean, there's a lot of potential. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know what? If him and the squid started training together, uh, they both have very long limbs, and who they knows do. what they could accomplish they together? They do. Right? But I'm scrappy, and I, you know, I'm I'm pretty fast, and I, I you know, and I've 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 wrestled a lot, you know, just through having two brothers, uh, but. We were in the green room. I was reading a book. Everyone else is kind of bored. Jared comes in, and he just blurts out. He's like, hey, anybody want to wrestle? And it was it's so <laughs> random. Um, and I don't know what. I'm like, yeah, I want to wrestle. Because I thought we were going to have, like, I thought it was going to be a fun thing where we, like, we're, you know, play wrestle or whatever that even means. I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. There was clothing involved, right? There was clothing involved. There was okay. no mud. Gel, we didn't have any gel. Um, okay. But I thought, like, okay, like, let's move some furniture, like, get, like, a, a like an area. But Jared just came right at me and started, tra- like, choking me out. Um, and he's really strong. Um, and so, you know, but thankfully he didn't know what to do with the strength, so I just kind of climbed around him before long. I had him in a chokehold. And I, you know, I didn't really want to, like, you know, squeeze too hard. because you, you locked him in. I did. I locked him in. And usually, if you know, like, UFC stuff, like, I could choke him out and he's... So he should have just tapped, but he didn't. He stood up, and so all of a sudden, I'm, like, really high up in the air. And so that's when I started squeezing real hard. And he tries to slam me down, but he's losing oxygen at the same time. (laughs) And so he goes down, and, like, we just missed the couch. We missed the marble coffee table, thank goodness. Um, And I just, like, I see the floor coming, and I just kind of tuck behind him. So he slams himself into the ground. Um... (laughs) And I st- stay on top of him, and then he, like, finally taps out. And, like, he sits up, and he's just pasty white. And he doesn't say anything. And, and like, it, the room's kind of quiet now. And he's like, I think I dislocated my arm. And then I was, I was absolutely mortified, but the room just erupted into cheers. Yep. <laughs> to this day, I think that is still the happiest I've ever seen Misha. <laughs> Like in my life. <laughs> oh. That is awesome. That's great. That is That's awesome. A great thank story. you, whoever asked that. Thank you. Um, we have time for one more question, so let's go up here. Hi. Hi. First of all, I wanted to say, Osric, I love you, but my question is for Alex. <laughs> I love that setup. <laughs> yeah. What was it like playing such a twisted guy in the Scream special? Ooh. Um. Tough story to, uh, to to top. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, so I was in the Scream TV show uh, really briefly for like a Halloween episode, and uh, it kind of looked like I would be the nice guy for, for, for Willa's character. Um, but unfortunately, I started murdering everybody in the small house, uh, much like there will be none. Or what was it called? And then there were none? Kind of like mm-hmm. that. Um, honestly, I had a great time. You know, they gave me a mask. I got to chase people. I'm... Killing people in little cottages in Louisiana. It was really charming. Um, I didn't quite have the Osric Chow level skills that I might have needed to be a murderer. Well, what um, was your favorite way of killing someone in that? I tried to push a girl off the balcony during like the rain at the very end. Uh, that was pretty, pretty epic. Uh, but she flipped it on me and, and I died. Uh, but that was just, that was great. Also, I think this is a great time to announce that you will be in John Wick 4, right? <laughs> no, okay, he's making okay, that sorry. up. Is there a John Wick 4, though? I would love There to. better be. There be. I haven't seen the third one. I need, I need to watch it. I, just, I saw the second one again on the plane. So good. I know, it's so good. So good. But no, it was a blast. <sighs> thank you so much. And thank you, guys. Did you guys have a good time? One more big round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you yes, so much. Yes,